So I am delighted to be joined here today by Ramiro Romani, who is the founder of Above Phone and Take Back Our Tech. Yes. Hey, Rubito. It's a pleasure. Thanks for having me on the show. I'm super excited to be here with your audience sharing some positive news. Absolutely. Yeah. So, well, before we go into the above phone and also uh, anything else that you're doing as well, I know now with the above phone, you've just launched um, a SIM card as well. Before we get into that, the idea behind these interviews as well is to just kind of show people famous people and non-famous people that are in the truth and freedom movement that are you know behind the scenes or in front of the camera making a difference and uh, so I just wondered if you could share briefly with the people watching this a little bit of background whatever you want to share about you know your growing up where you're from and everything but also when was the when was the realization for you? When was that moment when you when when the penny dropped and you realized that the world out there is not what we thought it was? Yeah, well, first, I think it's flattering to be included in like the spectrum of famous people and non-famous people. I'm somewhere in the middle. And I also think it's cool uh, that, you know, there's a semblance of a past life when it comes to awakening. You used to be investing your time into regular, mundane, normal people things, getting a job, starting a family, you know, going to college, all that jazz. So in that lifetime, I was not famous. And then um, it, now working outside of the system, which has been my focus over the past two to three years, you know, you're solely becoming more important in your field. And that's something... I see for anyone who's taking steps outside of their field, because we have this massive opportunity. And I'm just being vague now, but I'll, I'll give you my background. So um, yeah, so I used to be a software engineer and um, I worked for really big companies, uh, really small companies. Um, so it's kind of just a generalist and uh, built all sorts of stuff for mobile and web applications. And uh, along this time, too, I had a really good friend who started sharing some important things with me, such as how the banking system works, um, how the military industrial complex works, how uh, how our uh, the practice of medicine works. And so uh, tipping me onto this, it's just when I saw the inversion and how what's been purported to us is com the complete opposite of the truth that just set me down a rabbit hole. And I'd like to say, like, you know, I spent my time in college, I, instead of studying for school, I s spent my time studying what you would call conspiracy theories, you know, alternative thinking, like the real the real history. And that set me down a path of being ready for when um, I was working my corporate jobs. And, um, you know, I was reaching the pinnacle of my career. Um, it's kind of funny, like, as a software engineer, they teach you to look up to these big companies, you know, they call them FANG. Facebook, Amazon, Netflix, Google, that's that's the people you want to work for because they pay ridiculous amounts, whatever, they're at the top. But it's funny, as I um, as I started working with activist groups like the Freedom Cell Network, and we went toe to toe with Google and we saw that how they were trying to censor us on search results and basically throw obstacles in our path, um, it became really obvious to me that these are not the companies that we should be looking up to. In fact, there, you know, there are uh, they're holding back the progress of humanity. And so I, I had to do a lot of shifting and I decided on a whim to quit my job, move back home and take a big risk in doing the activist thing. And so I started working with the Freedom Soul Network um, back in 2019 and then you know, uh, serendipitously, I I, uh, I trust falled into that. And that was the year COVID happened, uh, the year after. And so our uh, our movement blossomed from just a few thousand people to close to 30,000. And I kind of caught the wave of that, just helping the website. So I run the tech infrastructure for them. I've been involved in producing the Greater Reset Conference, which took place this past January. And um, yeah, so, you know, I've had my pulse to what the freedom movement and their needs. And, and while doing this, I realized, oh, man, the people who need the most technological help more than anyone is the freedom movement, because things are, uh, you know, 
the traditional companies are are definitely working against their favor. And we've seen this from all the censorship we've seen over the past few years. So I decided to do something about it. I helped the only way I knew how, uh, doing a lot of research around these phones and coming up with solutions. And then uh, there's a greater vision of having replacing this entire software suite that we've become so accustomed to from Google Drive or Apple iCloud, all of that. How can we replace that and make it better and make it friendly? So that's my mission in life. And um, yeah, it's it's uh, it's going. And when did you found when did you found a, a buff phone? Yeah, so that was in 2021. So, you know, not too long ago. It's just been about two years now, um, the summer there. And uh, yeah, so this was something. So, you know, working as part of these activist movements, I got to get in touch with their volunteers. And I quickly built a team to, to kind of put out this work, uh, just creating digital presence. And I didn't feel good about communicating through third-party platforms. So quickly, we we started researching a lot of different software solutions. And we found the best way to stay in touch through our phones as well. So it was this big experimental process of using these alternative uh, de-Googled phones, as they call them, as we'll talk about today. And um, yeah, so we started the company based around that. We used to do like more consulting, but the phones were our first product. It took a while for us to get going, but now it's it's really, really successful. We have uh, hundreds and hundreds of people using the phones. It's integrated with a whole software ecosystem. Um, we have a number of core philosophies. One, we're ditching the cell network. We're ditching phone numbers. Um, we're ditching the Google Play Store. Uh, we're, we're ditching all these traditional operating systems that serve to spy on us. So yeah, um, it's been amazing. So going on for about two years now and uh, a lot more stuff in store. You've just launched uh, a new SIM card. How is the how is the SIM card different to a traditional SIM card that you would normally use? Yeah, so it's important to understand. So the normal SIM card, you know, it'll give you access to the internet through the cell network. And it'll also give you a phone number and um, yeah, you can call and text using the phone number. Um, so this SIM card is a data only SIM card. So it only lets you connect to the internet. And instead of using a phone number, you would use encrypted internet based communications. And, and that's a lot better. Um, in my research, you know, if you research how much of your data or how much of your call details these big telecom companies are withholding. And personally for me, you know, I've done research in the United States because that's where I live, but you can look into your own country, but you'll see that there's no transparency whatsoever. They are collecting your uh, your calls. Uh, they can collect your texts. And at least in the United States, there's a legal obligation for there to be a backdoor to government in case they need it for legal proceedings. So for, with all of that being said, and there's also, you know, those legal proceedings would be under... Uh, go through a judi judicial process, but there is also secret programs like uh, the Hemisphere in the United States that are just collecting call detail records en masse, uh, 40 billion call detail records a year, starting from 2008, that allow them to search phones and also to an analyze, you know, whether you have a burner phone, you switched phones, and now you're talking to the same people from a different phone, right? So they have all these, this control and granularity of however they can search. And this program has been going on for, you know, close to two decades. So um, and the the simple answer is, is just not trust the cell networks, uh, stop using phone calls and texts and switch to internet-based communication. So this SIM card is the first step in doing that. And um, there's other solutions you can actually use to communicate as well. So before we talk about the phone itself, um, you told me already that you're considering, I believe, uh, eventually also having laptops or computers. Uh, what is the direction that you're going in from phone to SIM card to, you know, where do you want to take this? Well, yeah, so it's a little, it's a, it's a whole ecosystem. And it always starts off with the education first. So before we were even selling phones, my first crusade against big tech was getting people to install uh, Linux on their machines, right? The only alternative operating system where every line of code in Linux you can see and read and thousands of other people have, have read it and you can change it. And that's important to actually give informed consent 
to how you're using your computer. So um, yeah, so at takebackertech.org, I did a, a whole line of different um, articles on how to use Linux. And if you don't mind, I'm going to bring that up on screen just so people can see. So yeah, so this is our website. It's takebackertech.org if you want to check it out. And our first crusade was getting people to realize that Windows and Mac computers are most definitely spying on you. They're trying to control what apps you use. You have to pay for it. You do have to pay for it. And um, yeah, they're trying to lock you into an ecosystem with all these uh, these privacy concerns, such as like, you know, for instance, Apple logs every app you launch on your computer. Windows has a built-in uh, Cortana voice assistant that is also cannot be removed from the operating system. So you have to wonder, is Cortana listening to me, right? So these are all questions that we explore in these articles. And um, this is the best article. Let me see. So we have this article called Why You Should Leap to Linux. Why You Should Make the Leap to Linux. And then How to Install Linux from Scratch. So those are the two articles you should look at. But to go back to the laptop, so, you know, I've been doing this for a year, encouraging people to do it themselves. It's easy to do it yourself, um, but some people don't have the time because some people are experts in their other fields, you know, things that I might go to someone for help if I need help with my garden, right? So people have been asking and asking for us to make our laptop. And so we're developing a laptop that's really easy to use, comes configured out of the box, has all the apps you need and is integrated, Right with the phone as well. So it's coming up. And if you if you can't wait for that, you can always install Linux yourself and check out those two articles. I go into um, pretty in depth into what you should be doing. The phone itself, there was, you know, there's been some people that have commented. In fact, I commented myself in reply to somebody else that it is actually possible to buy a phone, wipe it, install a different operating system and put all the apps on mm. what you're offering is a pre-ready phone with all of those apps installed plus a very uh, you know very uh, good uh, customer service where you're kind of available for questions and you're there if anyone's got any difficulties and you do webinars is there anything else that you've installed on the phone which is from you know yours that you've put together and you've 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 kind of created there well the phone so i mean we are standing on the shoulders of giants the operating system is is graphene os the software services that we run they're integrated with the phone so we run that on our data center right so it's the benefit of the ecosystem and it's really you know you are you are making the choice of whether, hey, do I want to spend the time to do this myself? There is research involved. You're going through the process or do I want to have it done for me? And um, you have we have your back if you decide to get a phone through us. And we even support people, you know, who don't have an above phone. We answer their questions. So, you know, that's the that's the you have to weigh that um, with the phone. It is configured. The permissions are configured. All the settings are configured in the optimal manner. And uh, yeah, it's we're we're an education resource. So you know, fold it into the price of the phone. It's the price we pay to help develop these materials and release them for free. So, like you mentioned, the webinars, which you can check out at learn.abovephone.com. So it's a, a lot of our work is education too, right? It's not just um, putting together a software package, but teaching people how to use it. And um, the price of the phone, it comes with an hour of free support, 30 minutes to an hour of free support. So you just, you have more of a support. So I know that some people are going to want to, uh, they're, they're technically savvy and they want to do this themselves. And I completely encourage that, um, you know, you can check out the operating systems and they have the best install guides to do how, but if you're looking for more support and just getting it out of the box, ready to use less time you need to spend working on it, then um, yeah, above phone is probably the right choice for you. And uh, there's one more thing I was going to share, which was our knowledge base. So here is a set of solutions that, um, you know, it just teaches you everything you need about using a Google phone. And again, this is open to the public. It's not like we're trying to hide this. So you get a sense of everything you can do, um, you know, how to install and manage apps. 
etc. cetera. Uh, so all, all this good stuff, you'll be able to, you'll be able to browse and learn either on your own or, or with us. Where is that located? Sorry, what's the URL for that one? Yeah, the URL for that one is kb.above.im. So what I, what I feel that people need to understand, you know, people that are maybe questioning whether they should be going to a third party to buy the phone is just what you said. You know, we don't all have time to be deeply researching everything. And the amount of research that you put in and that you continue to put in because this is your passion, because this is your calling, is not something that everybody else can do. And I think that's what you're offering through these phones is your knowledge, your expertise, your research, making sure that these phones really live up to what, you know, what your what your mission is, which is to take people away or de-googling people from technology. There's some other company, I think, that's also got some sort of de-Google phone. Do you have any thoughts on that phone? Someone was sharing with me. Do there's, you- there's, there's so many companies that are, uh, are doing this and, you know, all, all different types. You know, there's companies that do Linux phones. There's companies that do de-Googled phones. So I'd need to know the name. Um, but uh, yeah, just going back to what you said, it's, uh, you're asking about, you know, what, what, what is in the pipeline? So, I mean, we, we have plans. I mean, we're transforming into a a full on tech company here. So we will have our own mobile app that comes with the phone. You're right. And you're going to be able to manage all of your, your software services with it. And it's pretty impressive. You know, the suite of software services we've been able to put together already, like it compares to Google and ProtonMail, honestly, with the amount of stuff that you get. So um, yeah, this is called Above Suite. I like to call it that. It's called Above Privacy Suite. And I'll just share with you a few things that you can do on it just to give you an idea. But um, I I think it's pretty rare to find a company that one, makes the devices and two, actually offers a whole ecosystem. So, I mean, this is the model that we have and we want to see other people do this so we have uh, one, the phones have a built-in VPN. It's a really lightweight VPN protocol called WireGuard, right? So this will protect your internet traffic from both your internet service provider and your cell service provider. They really won't be able to see what you're connecting to besides our VPN server. And our VPN server connects the websites you're visiting on your behalf, gets that information back and sends it back to you encrypted. So um, less snooping on uh, on your on your network traffic. We also offer a private email, and then there's video conferencing too. Right now we're using Zoom, but we have an alternative. And I know you and I chatted about it being hard to record with. Um, and yeah, there's a little bit. Um, so, but what it is, it is completely private, and it leaves no trace on our video conferencing server. So that application is called Jitsi. You can also use the there's free Jitsi servers, but this one is optimized for privacy that we use. We offer our own search engine as well. Um, so that is like a proxy for when you're searching on the internet, you might be searching Google, but you're not sending your search request directly to them. It's actually going through our meta search engine. And then lastly, you have the chat and the phone, which are the standout. Like This is what I personally believe that everyone or a large number of people are going to have to start communicating on if they want to communicate unimpeded, unimposed on. And um, there are forces in the background that are trying to make solutions like this illegal there. I mean, they're just straight out trying to make encryption illegal, both in the UK, which I'm sure you've heard about, and in the US. So we're going to need to rely on people running free and open source software like XMPP. And I mean, this is essentially, it's, this is like a, um, this is a protocol, meaning that anyone can write their own server, anyone can write their own client, right? The client is the app on the phone. And it lets you send messages, it lets you send files, it lets you make calls, it lets you make video calls. So it's already functionally equivalent to something like Facebook Messenger or even Telegram, but everything is end-to-end encrypted. So meaning that even the servers involved in it can't see what you are communicating, right? So I think that I think that is something that is super sacred and we need to learn how to use these tools. So yeah, our privacy suite packages all of this stuff together. It's a lot of stuff. 
And um, yeah, it's a, it's a hundred bucks a year. So if you want to try out cutting edge technology, it's, it's already here and ready for you to use. Right. So um, yeah, that's what we're doing. And we hope that other companies follow in our footsteps and, you know, make this more accessible. The chat, do you need to have an above, does the other person need to have an above phone in order to chat and communicate? Yeah, good question. So no, they don't. Um, you can use XMPP through the web browser. You can use it on any phone. You can even use it on your desktop. And I didn't get to share an exciting thing about the phone number, so I'll share that in a second. But um, yeah, it's this concept of universal internet utilities um, that we're trying to promote where um, the software shouldn't prevent you from using it how you want it to be used. So what I mean by that is these are more protocols and there are specific pieces of software. You know, you have choices. You have the freedom of choice of what app you want to use for XMPP on your computer. You have the choice for what email client you want to use, right? IMAP is the email protocol. IMAP SMTP is the email protocol. XMPP is the chat protocol. Instead of using someone like, I'm not going to name a name, but you know, when you use an encrypted webmail provider, you have to use their app. You have to use their website. So this is opening up that space and uh, giving you the freedom to use it as you want. So right now, um, anyone, so if you're on iOS, for instance, you don't even need to have a Googled phone. You can find this app uh, called Snicket on both iOS and Android and start using XMPP today. Now, there's other things you have to worry about with it not being a Googled phone. Like, for instance, is your keyboard generating logs? On Google, it is generating logs, and we can only guess at the information. So there's other factors that you have to take in mind, that there are other ways that may be able to sloop on your messages, but you can still use these software services. And um, and yeah, so I think that's I think that's powerful, and we need to move in the protocol direction, um, not just try and like own massive pieces of it and force everyone to use your app or to use your service. We need to decentralize our communications. Does the suite, um, are you updating it with the latest new apps? If something comes along when you're just like, oh my goodness, this is so amazing. We've got to stick that in there. Do you, uh, is this, is the suite updated um, and changed? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, there is, there are a lot of ideas we have, but we spend time making sure that this is reliable software that aligns with our philosophy. So, I mean, what, one of the things you could expect this year is we are, you know, we are developing that mobile app to manage the suite, which again, will be optional. You can access all these apps either way, but it's a way to kind of just go to your dashboard. It's more like a way that, you know, you tap an icon in there and you're going directly to the service you know, either launches the app on your phone or it goes to the website. And um, we are wanting to add different services like translation, which we're already, you know, we've been beta testing that or alpha testing that internally for a long time. And then there's other stuff like cloud storage. And we'll know we'll have hit, you know, a certain level when we're offering cloud storage to people. So those are the two big goals we have for, for this year. But yeah, there's no limit to the amount of differences, different services we can offer. Great. So what would you say to people who, you know, they, they hear what you're saying. It sounds really good. It sounds like a great idea, but they're just, there's a bit of fear there that they're going to have to learn something completely new. Maybe they're not really tech savvy. They've kind of mastered how to use WhatsApp or uh, telegram or signal and uh, um, and the idea of just taking on a completely different operating system in and of itself just sounds kind of scary to them sure well i would say don't be scared and we can even give you a demo of what it's like because it's really not that much different than anything else you've used in fact um the phone the above phone, Graphene OS, is even using a Android-based operating system. So, uh, Rabita, let me know if you can see that. Yeah, I can see that fine, yeah. Cool. So, yeah, I mean, this is the phone, right? So, like, you swipe up from the bottom, you get all your apps. So, you get your notifications and all of that, right? And uh, so, it's not anything you're not used to before, right? So, this is how the above phone actually comes in out of the box, right? You have uh, you have different ways to consume media. 
this is new pipe right here the red one in the middle is a way to watch youtube privately it's actually better than the youtube application like you can download videos you can let them play in the background i'm sure you've run into that annoying thing where you want to listen to your favorite song on youtube and as soon as you lock the phone it stops that because they want you to pay for youtube premium well new pipe takes that out of the equation and gives you that feature for free so that's kind of, that's kind of ridiculous. It's ridiculously awesome, right? It gives you more ownership of your media. Um, that app to the left of New Pipe is AntennaPod, which is a podcasting app, and it similarly does the same thing. You can find podcasts from anywhere. You don't need to go through a third party or register or sign up or anything, and you can download those to your phone. Let's see what I got here. Oh, see, you can even tell them to leave you alone. Um, and this is our podcast, the Take Back Our Tech podcast, which. It's been a while since our last episode, but um, yeah. So, you know, again, you can search for your favorite content creators and to go back to like why I think you should do this, why I think you should step through the fear. One, it's not that hard. You're going to understand it. It's going to be fine. And two, you need to learn how to use this technology before traditional technology becomes so locked down that they start making unreasonable demands of you and how to use it. And right. And it's going to be a lot more stressful to be in that situation um, when, um, you know, maybe Google will be requiring your, uh, your vaccination details in order to use certain things on the phone or, um, yeah, it'll be forcing you to sign in for mundane or trivial things, or it might even be reading the contents of your photos, uh, automatically as you upload them. I mean, it already does that for Google photos. I don't know how long it'll take for them to actually read the photos stored inside your phone. I know Apple has been um, testing a program call, uh, for, for CCM that did this, that they quietly shut down today. But guys, the laws that are promoting this are not that far away. They're called Earn It, which is in, uh, it's in this bill is waiting to be passed in the Senate in the United States. Um, and then in the UK, it's called the Child Safety Act. They both want the same thing to get rid of encryption or to provide a backdoor to it. So would you rather wait until, um, God forbid, those, you know, those bills pass and then, you know, people using, you know, the majority of the world that uses the Internet are going to be fugitives where they're going to be breaking the law for simply doing it. Would you rather wait until that happens or would you rather know how to use the technology ahead of time and be completely using it? So if there are more restrictions, you don't even have to worry about it. All right. I got off on a tangent there. Yeah. Would you like to share more of the phone while you're sharing the screen? So yeah, this is what the phone looks like out of the box. You've got different alternatives. So you even have different ways to navigate and um, so it's really cool. This app on the, this green app on the bottom here, it's called Organic Maps, and it actually lets you download the maps offline, so you can keep them on your phone. You download the map for every region, and then you can actually navigate the world without internet. You don't even need to have a SIM card in your phone. It uses GPS, which doesn't need internet. Um, and so yeah, so you have your email apps, you have the communication apps. Here's Snicket that I was talking about earlier. Um, and I believe you can, uh, you can actually make phone calls over the internet using Cheogram and that bridges XMPP over to the internet, uh, or over to the phone network. And now you can start having anonymous phone calls. Uh, so yeah, we're completely changing the paradigm. Like we don't have to use these old forms of communications anymore. We have something that's convenient and private. And here's a Jitsi Meet as well. So that's how you uh, act. that's how you use video conferencing on the above phone. And it's really, really simple. You can start a meeting and invite people. So you can see that, you know, any of these is a meeting and it creates like a special link. You share that link with people that just hop in. It's really, really easy and has all the features you would expect from something like Zoom. And there's uh, other, you know, other things too. There's uh, our VPN is built in here. This is how you browse the internet. This uh, browser called Vanadium. We uh, partnered with Presearch. We have their browser on there as well. Different things for security, uh, different things for apps. And um, so, yeah, this is actually how you download different apps. Uh, let me show you F-Droid first. This app store has... Every app on this app store, every line of code is transparent. So you can see exactly what the app is doing. 
there's, a, there's other people looking over it. And more importantly, you can copy the app and change it however you would like it. So there, you don't run into the instance of someone is hanging on to their app and they implement a bad feature or they add pricing or something. You always have the freedom to take a copy or fork it and then make your own on this app store particularly. So here's an app actually I use all the time. This is my running app. Um, and so it's an open source way to manage your run. And it's actually really great. You don't have to pay for it, right? So it's just another example of how this ecosystem is not just competing against big tech. It is better than big tech. And I think that is something really powerful. Um, so yeah, this is this phone right here. This is the Pixel 6. So here's this uh, the Pixel 6. This phone right here is kind of how it looks like the size. And um, you can find more devices on our website, abovephone.com slash devices. So I hope that was a cool little breakdown of the phone just to show you that it's not so alien. You will be able to learn it. It's really, it's savvy, it's intuitive, and you're going to like it a lot. Great. And we've also, we've teamed up already on this project because I support you 100%. And uh, there's the code B positive 50 gets you $50 off if you decide to buy a device. Is there anything that at the moment it, you would say the phone isn't suitable for, for example, gaming, or I don't game at all, but gaming and things like this, you know? Yeah, no. Um, streaming movies, stuff like this. Streaming movies, well, it's been a while since we tested Netflix on it, and those things are subject to change, but there's only a few things that wouldn't work or didn't have, like, workarounds on this phone and gaming is one of those you mentioned um this operating system graphene os has a hardened me memory allocator so it's constantly going through erasing the memory on your phone so if there's any rogue apps or attacks they don't have access to it so that makes it harder for games which need to hold a, a lot of stuff in memory you know all the objects the the worlds all of that so uh gaming especially 3d gaming has uh it's you you know won't, the app usually isn't able to run but i will say i play chess on my above phone all the time there's this really cool app called li chess that's available so you know your basic gaming will work but if you use your phone if you use a privacy phone for gaming i think you have you know you have other priorities you can keep your old phone right keep your old phone for that kind of stuff but um there's that and then you have to think about apps like Uber and Lyft and Airbnb, these apps all have um, uh, dependencies on Google services. And this is a phone without any Google services at all. So um, either you use those apps through the web browser, or you can actually set up a jail, a sandbox for Google services to run in. And uh, then you can install Google services in there. It's much better than a traditional phone because it's brought down. It's not like a normal phone where Google services it as, as a God level and can like interact with any app. It's only called upon when it's needed and it's separated from all the other data on your phone. So, you know, there's workarounds for, for everything. And you've got the web, the webinars already talk about the sandbox and how to do that feature as well. Right. Most definitely. Yeah. Um, there's articles on our knowledge base about how to do that. I demo it in the very first webinar called Above the Rules. So check that out. And I have for more info, lots of stuff to dig into. Great. I've got one question to, to maybe finish, or I'll ask you if you've sure. got any other thoughts and ask you for your websites. But I've got one other question to finish. So there's been a couple of people that have mentioned uh uh, that they wouldn't want to trust somebody with a Masonic symbol. <laughs> and I replied to them, yeah. then please take it up with the alphabet because the, the letter A, uh, you know, it's uh, mm. that's not a Masonic symbol. But when you were showing on your website, you showed the, mm. the, the picture of the phone and it was 1111. Mm -hmm. And I just wondered if you if there was any reason for that, because, uh, you know, some people are really into numerology and things like that. There's most definitely a reason of that. And I'll just bring it up on the screen. Right. Um, so I'll start off the two part question. Right. The triangle. Um, it's a it's a composition of triangles. Triangles aren't Masonic. If you've given up your power and just be like, all right, Masons, here, take all the triangles. No one can else, you, no one can use triangles, otherwise they're evil. You know, you've kind of already given up. 
in a sense. So I'd ask you to look within and ask yourself why uh, you would give away simple symbols to other people and not try and use utilize their power for themselves. And there are a lot of powers in the triangle, but in this way, you know, it's it's not Masonic whatsoever. Um, it is an A, like, you know, the A, and then you have the B in here. And what you can actually see, there is symbolism in there, but it's toppling the triangle in the middle. So we're cutting in to this. Uh, yeah, we're, you know, we're cutting into the establishment and we're not, we're going our own way so that it topples over without us needing to do anything. Right. So that's the little symbolism in the logo. And um, yeah, even in our webinar, we do have the angel numbers, it's the singularity, right? One, 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 one. We are all one. We're all one people. Um, we are, <laughs> you are me, I am you. And once we, you know, once we get closer to that, we get closer to the source. We, we begin doing what we were here on earth, uh, what we got brought uh, here on earth to do. So you know, it's part of this uh, uh, this rising consciousness that we tap into, and and there are there is meaning behind it, but it's not meaning that's hijacked by any organization or government or, or Masonic people. It's our it's our own meaning. It's the charge we create with it. And so, I would say to you, when you see these symbols, why don't you try putting your own significance and meaning and emotion, and not identifying with things that have charged you and, and programmed you to think a certain way? Because that will narrow your worldview. Um, and that's not to say that you know powerful evil organizations don't use these symbols, but to say that no one can use these symbols uh, under threat of being associated with them—that's just unreasonable, and you're giving away your power. Great, well said. Yeah, so I also had a similar experience. First of all, with um, mm -hmm. COVID, I actually decided in the channel for the last year to repurpose that name as creating our vision in detail, mm -hmm. while also reporting on the positive news of, of the last three years. Mm -hmm. um, and then also, my the, I changed the logo on COVID positive news. And somebody pointed out that it looks very similar to the badges they wear at the World Economic Forum. And I thought, <laughs> you just can't win. Perfect. Now, there's always somebody out there that's going to pick a triangle or pick a particular design. Mm -hmm. And they're going to say, oh, these guys are controlled opposition. Mm -hmm. So maybe my final question, I think, is quite fitting to this discussion. And I, I love the, the intentionality, the intention of the, the 111, we're all one, is you can buy one of these phones out of fear. You know, oh my God, you know, they're going to come. They're going to take control of us. I've got to do this. Or you can buy one of these phones out of love, which is let's start learning how to use things differently. And let's, let's you know, gradually step by step, tip by tip, tip, tip tiptoeing uh, into a new paradigm uh, without the fear. And so do you have maybe any thoughts for people that are, you know, we talk sometimes at CPN about these, these kind of phases. You've mm -hmm. got the cognitive dissonance, suddenly all oh, my worldviews collapsed. Then it's going down the rabbit hole, seeing how everything's connected and, every, and you, we're all screwed because it's too big for us. The next okay. stage is then reclaiming your health, reclaiming your balance, how I, how I see it. And then the final stage is what are you going to do about it? So what, what would you say to people, you know, about buying one of these phones, but with the right intention behind it? Yeah, I would say that I would say we're on that fourth stage. Come on, guys. It's, you know, it hasn't been it's very, very obvious what's going on in the world. And we simply, you know, the action we need to take is to one, not go along with it, reject it. And then uh, build a better way. Um, and that's up to us. So it kind of brings us back to the beginning of this conversation. Well, how are, what difference are you going to make in this world? How are you going to uh, move into this new life? What solutions are you going to bring to the table? And my advice to you is if you are getting these phones, use it as a tool. It's an investment. It is there to support you. Um, your passion, your life's passion, you know, it's there to plug you in. To directly to that knowledge, so that no one can uh, hold that over you, right? You can, you can, and this to get uh, 3D for a second. Yeah, you can download, you know, videos from your favorite um, content creators. Maybe they're about permaculture. Maybe they're about free energy. You know, whatever it is that you have a passion about, 
use this phone to serve you and to serve yourself. You can, you know, um, that kind of, I didn't get to say this, but one of the things that we emphasize is this is a platform for you to build your business on, right? Business, you know, free exchange, whatever you're offering this world, you can use these solutions to do that in a way that's completely peer to peer and is uh, freedom minded. So that's what I see. This phone is just a tool among many and um, it's a tool to help you build your tools. So we're just looking forward to seeing what you're going to build with the above phone. Thank you so much. Perfect. So just, just to, to wrap up, uh, I'm going to put all of the links to all of the websites that you've talked about and uh, in the description of this video, wherever the people are watching it now, as well as the code for the $50 discount on a phone. But would you like to just share the, the main websites that people should be going to? Yeah, sure. So if you're interested about the phone, check out abovephone.com and our webinars where, you know, you kind of get to see me go into everything the phone does. That's learn.abovephone.com. If you want education, if you, if you want to, if you have the question, why should I use this phone? Go to takebackourtech.org. There's a lot of articles on mobile privacy there. Um, and I also want to recommend that you sign up to the mailing list on abovephone.com. That plugs you into all of our mailing lists, so you'll be the first to get this feed. So, um, yeah, that's abovephone.com slash webinar. Um, and the last website, so those are my personal projects. I also uh, invite you to check out freedomcells.org, Freedom Cell Network. This is a local uh, local peer-to-peer -peer movement that is taking place for anyone who wants to take their life back in their own hands in collaboration with other people near them. So basically on that site, you can go in, you can type in your city and you see other people and groups that are nearby. You get to see their interests as well. So it's a way to find solidarity with, uh, with others and, you know, fraternity and sorority uh, with your brothers and sisters um, in these times where we, where we need help. So I invite you to check that out. Um, and yeah, I mean, that's pretty much everything I've got. And uh, yeah, man, thank you for, for having me on this awesome interview. Thank you, too. Thank you so much. And um, yeah, I look forward to getting my hands on one of these phones. We're sorting that out right now. And then I'll be sharing with people my experience using one of these phones. Awesome. Then much more to come. We'll get you one of those right away. Great. All right. Thank you so much. Peace. Blessings. Blessings.